Welcome to the 10-minute tutorial for research. My name is Greg Bright. I'm a senior solutions architect with AWS, working with higher education and research customers. Today, we're going to talk about Amazon S3 storage classes and lifecycle policies. In the next 10 minutes, we'll take a look at the different S3 storage classes and how choosing the right class for your data can save you money, particularly when using Amazon S3 Glacier for archival. For data you may have already stored in S3, we'll demonstrate how to move it between those storage classes using both the AWS console and the AWS command line interface. Now, needing to manually move data between classes really is an idea. So next, we'll look at how that process can be automated using S3 lifecycle policies, and we'll build one to move the data between the different storage tiers when the need for retrieval trails off with an object's age. That's a lot to cover in the next now nine minutes, so let's get started. Amazon S3 object storage is an ideal service to house your research data sets. It offers industry-leading scalability, data availability, security, and performance. For data that is in active use in your research, you'll want to use S3 standard. But for data you are no longer actively using, but want to have quickly available in case it's needed, you can choose S3 standard in frequent access. Both S3 standard and S3 standard IA ensure your data is available in milliseconds. Archival data can be kept in cold storage using Amazon Glacier. To keep costs low, yet suitable for varying needs, S3 Glacier provides three levels of retrieval, and those options range from a few minutes to a few hours. With these lower storage tiers, you can save as much as 90% compared to S3 standard, but with a retrieval fee for retrieving data. Also keep in mind there are minimums for storage durations and object size. However, all the storage tiers still have S3's 11 nines of durability, fine-grained security controls, and encryption options. So how can you move data between storage tiers? Let's take a look. So here we are in the Amazon S3 console and you can see I have a series of data sets in buckets. And we'll select the first data set in this Falcon Geodata. And here you'll see I have a list of objects. I'm going to select one of these objects. We'll choose 078 JSON. Uh, I'll click the checkbox by that, uh, that file. And I'll choose the Actions dropdown. And under this dropdown, we have an option to edit the storage class. So I'll select Edit Storage Class, and I'm presented with a dialog with the various storage classes. So for this object, I'm going to transition it to standard infrequent access. So I'm selecting the radio button by that object, uh, and I will say Save Changes. I get a nice green toast confirmation at the top of the screen. I can close this confirmation window uh, and you'll see when my list of objects are shown, that object now shows it is in the storage class standard and frequent access. You're able to do the same thing uh, from the, uh, the AWS command line interface as you can in the console. Let's take a look at how we can do that. Here I am in an AWS Cloud Shell window, and I'm going to paste in a S3 uh, command. Uh, so it's AWS S3 and CP for copy. And I'm going to use the same file location, so the fully qualified S3 path to my object, as both the source and the destination of my copy command, and specify the parameter storage class and the storage class of infrequent access. So we'll go ahead and run that. And we see that file is now copied. And if I go back to my bucket and refresh the screen, you'll see that now the 106 file 
is moved to standard and frequent access as well. So the nice thing about the command line interface is you can do this for a group of objects using the recursive parameter in conjunction with that storage class. So I'm gonna take the last command that we have and remove the file name from the source and destination and just leave the root of the bucket or a prefix uh, if you desire and add the recursive parameter. And then I basically will iterate through and move all of the objects in the bucket to standard infrequent access. And again, if I refresh my bucket, uh, you'll see that the objects now are all there. So that is great for moving objects manually, but that's not really ideal. What we wanna do is have objects move automatically based on how they're used. So if you have data sets that have time-based access patterns, you can use what we call lifecycle policies to transition objects between the different storage classes. For example, let's say that we have a data set that's being continuously added to, and during our research, we actively use that data for the first week or two after, the, after it has been stored. And then after a year, we don't really ever access it, but based on our compliance needs and the terms of our grant, we need to keep the data for a, a retention period of five years. So with lifecycle policies, we're able to set up rules to move objects older than 30 days to S3 standard infrequent access. And then after 365 days, we can transition the data to S3 Glacier Deep Archive. So let's take a look back in the console about how we can set up a lifecycle policy to do just that. So here I am back uh, where I just moved my objects to standard and frequent access. Uh, I'm gonna go to the root of Amazon S3 in the console. I'm gonna choose a new bucket this time. So I'm gonna choose the Raven Lottie archive. And when you're in the root of the bucket, at the top, you'll have a series of tabs. So lifecycle policies appear under the management tab. So we'll click on the management tab and the first uh, section in that page is lifecycle rules. Here we will create a lifecycle rule and we'll give it a name. I'm just gonna call this one demo. And we can limit the scope of a rule to a particular prefix to filter or we could do it for all objects in the bucket. In this case, I'm going to specifically move the objects under the prefix 2015. So essentially my data sets from 2015. Uh, and then we are going to select what is the action we want to do with the matching objects for that prefix. So we'll select the checked box next to transition current versions of objects between storage classes. That's essentially what we'd like to do. Uh, and we're gonna do a storage class transition to standard and frequent access. So that's the default that comes up in the dropdown. But we wanna do that after 30 days. And now we want to add an additional transition, this time to go to Glacier Deep Archive. So in uh, the dropdown for the storage class, we'll choose Glacier Deep Archive, and the period of time here will be 365 days. So something to note when you use lifecycle transitions is there is a nominal fee associated with the movement of objects. So if your data set has a lot of really small objects, something you might consider doing before moving stuff to Glacier would be to tar them up or zip them up in a compressed uh, single file and then move that to Glacier. So that can help reduce cost. In this case, I know my data, I don't really have a whole bunch of small objects. I'm comfortable with the transition costs associated with moving them. So I'll acknowledge that. Uh, I am good with that. And finally, at the bottom, it shows us a summary of the timeline. So uh, we'll uh, do nothing with the object. It'll stay in standard for the first 30 days. On day 30, it will move to standard and frequent access. And then on day 365, it'll transition to Glacier Deep Archive. 
and I simply create that rule. I get a nice green toast acknowledging that the rule was created, it shows me my lifecycle rule with some information. I can further click into it uh, to reconfirm that timeline summary that it is doing uh, what I'd like. And now this will just happen in uh, the course of time as objects age in your S3 bucket and you don't need to actively manage it. So for additional information related to storage classes and lifecycle policies, you can check out the resources at the links below. And that concludes our 10 minute tutorial for S3 storage classes and lifecycle policies. I hope you found this information useful and we'll see you in the next 10 minute tutorial for research.